Now, Gibraltar authorities have also released all 24 Indians on board the Iranian tanker Grace Fund that was taken into custody on 4th July. Indian crew members are now free to return to India. The news was confirmed by Indian High Commissioner to London. Minister of State V. Murali Dharan tweeted and I quote, spoke to our High Commissioner on VLCC Grace One. They confirmed all 24 Indian crew aboard VLCC Grace One have been released by Gibraltar authorities and are free to return to India. Now, last month, Indian officials from Indian Mission in London got consular access to crew members and the three member team went to meet them. The Indian crew spent 43 days in detention on board the ship. Citizens from Russia, Philippines were also on board the tanker. Focus now remains on the 18 Indians on board the UK oil tanker Stena Impero that was detained by Iran. Stena Impero was detained for failing to respect international maritime rules, according to Iranian authorities. Now, Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale has met Iranian Ambassador in Delhi and Indian Ambassador in Tehran has had meetings with senior officials of Iranian Foreign Ministry regarding the issue. Now, American Democrat Ilhan Omar has called Israel's decision to ban her from visiting the country a chilling response. In a strongly worded statement, Ilhan Omar has said that it was an insult to democratic values to deny entry to sitting members of the U.S. Congress. The Somali refugee elected to Congress from Minnesota last year was denied entry to Israel along with fellow first-term Democrat Rashid Atalyev. Israeli officials said the pair, the first Muslim women to serve in Congress, were barred because they support a boycott of the country over its treatment of the Palestinians. U.S. President Donald Trump has defended Israel's decision. Well, I'm only involved from the standpoint of uh, they are very anti-Jewish and they're very anti-Israel. I think it's disgraceful, the things they've said. You have lists of, uh, this isn't just a one-line mistake. What they've said about Israel and Jewish people is a horrible thing, and they've become the face of the Democrat Party. So uh, I did absolutely put out a very strong statement. I think if you look at their language, if you look at what they've said, if I ever said it, it would be, uh, it would be a horrible, it would be a horrible month, to put it mildly. So the things that they've said, uh, Omar, Talib, what they've said is uh, disgraceful. So I can't imagine why Israel would let them in. But if they want to let them in, they can. But I can't imagine why they would do it. Earlier, Trump even took to Twitter to attack both the leaders, calling them a disgrace. Trump said, and I quote, it would show great weakness if Israel allowed Representative Omar and Representative Talib to visit. They hate Israel and all Jewish people, and there's nothing that can be said or done to change their minds. Minnesota and Michigan will have a hard time putting them back in office. They are a disgrace. Now, the U.S. president last month had also targeted Omar and Talib over two and uh, two other Democratic congresswomen of color with racist attacks, saying the four politicians should go back to where they came from. Now, Trump's tweets come on the back of reports that Israel is considering barring two Democratic congresswomen from an upcoming visit to Israel and the Palestinian territories because of their support for a boycott against Israel. If this decision is made official, it would be a reversal of what Israeli envoy to U.S. Ron Derma had said just a month ago. Derma had stated that out of respect for the U.S. Congress and the great alliance between Israel and America, Israel would not deny entry to any member of Congress. Meanwhile, a Palestinian leader has called the decision an attempt to stop the world from seeing the quote-unquote cruel and oppressive nature of Israeli occupation. Whether it is fear of their opinions or whether it is rejection of their uh, religion, ethnicity or color, or even gender, we don't know, but it is very clear that it is a sign of weakness that they refuse to allow them to come in. Not as Trump said, if you allow them to come in, it is weakness. Weakness is inability to deal with dissent, inability to deal with disagreements, and of course an attempt at imposing a complete shutdown on the horrors of its illegal occupation of Palestine.